I will be presenting an analysis of a maxillary reconstruction model. Reconstruct surgery is essential for a total maxillectomy, and free flaps are comp commonly used for reconstructive surgery. Based on the difference in tissue structure of the flaps, there are two types of reconstruction techniques. One is soft tissue reconstruction, in which only soft tissue is used for re reconstruction. The other is bone reconstruction, in which bone and soft tissue are used. Soft tissue reconstruction involves designing a free flap to match the volume of the defect tissue and filling it with skin, fat, or muscle. Soft tissue reconstruction has the great advantage of simplicity and short surgical time. However, in the long time, the mid-face become atrophic and depressed and drooping. In addition, although dangers can be made, little or no chewing is possible. Bone reconstruction involves placing bone in the anterior buccal and alveolar region and soft tissue around it. Bone reconstruction can control buccal recession because the bone tissue acts like a tent frame and chewing is enabled to dentures or implant. However, there is no standard bone placement or bonding technique. Often a second flap is needed due to lack of soft tissue or a vein graft is required due to the so short vascular pedicle, resulting in a lengthy surgery. There have also been cases of post-operative bone infection and removal. At this time, the choice of reconstruction method is on a case-by-case -case basis, but it is clear that bone reconstruction is advantageous for mastication. In some cases, it has become possible to place implants at the same time as reconstruction. The fibula is said to be particularly suitable for implant placement. The risk of fibula and plate deformation due to normal mastication has not been well evaluated. Therefore, mechanical evaluation is necessary prior to the widespread use of dental implants. The purpose of this study was to create a one-stage implant placement model for DICOM data and to analyze the behavior of the fibula and plate under occlusal stress. The patient is a 31-year-old male. The left maxilla was completely ablated and the left fibula was placed. A titanium mean plate for facial bone, one for each junction, was used to secure the fibula to the maxilla and zygomatic bone and two dental implants were placed in line with the dentition and connected to the overdenture. The implant is inserted following the angle of the tooth. The implant placement sites are limited due to the arrangement of the fibula. Therefore, overdentures are only fabricated up to the first molar. The boundary condition between the facial bone and fibula was set as contact for the post-operative model and the fixation for the bone fusion model. The material properties are set as shown in the table with reference to previous studies. The coefficient of friction between the facial bone and fibula in the post-operative model is set to 1 dot del. Since the fibula and plate are the object of analysis in this case, the boundary between the target and the implant object, such as a screw or implant, is assumed to be fixation. 
the posterior cranial floor was contrained and average maximum occlusal forces were applied to the molars. Loads are applied to the masticatory muscle origins and mandibular fossa to prevent rotation of the entire facial bone. Results Displacement of obdenture was greatest in both models. The maximum displacement in the post-operative model was 1.0 mm. The fibula was displaced approximately 0.1 to 0.6 mm in the post-operative model and 0.1 to 0.4 mm in the bone fusion model. The fibula displacement was greater on the median side. The displacement vectors show that the post-operative model has a larger displacement to the head side compared to the bone fusion model. The obodenture is noticeably displaced anteriorly. In other words, the obodenture is considered to rotate upward and forward around the fibula due to mastication. The distribution of stories showed that they were applied from the oval denture to the fibula via the implant and distrib distributed medially and laterally. The fibula showed a strong minimum principal stress in the cortex at the implantation site and an equivalent maximum principal stress in the contralateral cortex. The plate in the post model is subject to the some stresses of the implant, but the stress on the plate in the bone fusion model is reduced, and new stresses are generated at the fibular boundary. Similar findings are observed at the lateral boundary. A numerical comparison showed that the plates in the postoperative model are clearly more stressed. And the screw has the same findings as the plate. The distribution of yield risk showed that the risk was higher at the maxillary bony junction and infraorbital numeral foramen and pisiform foramen rather than at the fibula or plate. The same findings are true in terms of tensile failure risk, though in the postoperative model, a high risk area was found localized at the inferior margin of the plate hole on the maxillary bone side. In the bone fusion model, it is distributed over the entire junction surface. Comparison of volumetric histograms of yield and tensile failure risk of facial bone showed higher risk for the post-operative model in all risk bands. The same is true for the fibula. The difference was even more pronounced in the plates. Screws are similar to plates. This analysis provided the following findings. The first, with each mastication, the obodenture rotates around the fibula, especially on the median side. The second, stresses on the bony joints are mainly internal fixators, postoperatively. But as the bones heal, the stresses are distributed to the joint surfaces. The third, facial bone, fibula, plates, and screws have an acceptable risk of deformation even when masticated with maximum occlusal force. However, 
Previous studies have shown that displacement of more than 150 micrometers can interfere with bone fusion, and that stresses on the screw exceeding 85 megapascals can cause loosening. In other words, concentrated maximum occlusal pressure may indicate a risk of bone fusion failure and plate removal. Limitations in this analysis are the possibility of strength degradation due to plasticity caused by plate bending was not taken into account. The behavior in multiple mastication was not analyzed too. We also believe that comparison with other fibular joint methods reported to date, the alien and scapula is in need of further study. Thank you.